some of the proponents of neo-Darwinism have cited the type 3 secretory system as the uh, aboriginal system from which the entire flagellum might have arisen through a gradual evolutionary process. And the reason they cite the type 3 secretory system as a possible ancestor to the flagellum is that the structure of this roughly 10-part uh, secretory apparatus does, does play a part, or something similar to it, does play a part in the flagellum itself during the assembly of the flagellum. And it ends up also hanging around as part of the structure of the flagellum. Now, <clears throat> to build a flagellum, you need a lot more than a type 3 secretory system or anything similar to it. But people have suggested that this is the, the ancestral form upon which all the other parts are, were added. To, to build the full flagellum. And so they've suggested, hey, be he you're wrong. The, the, uh, the, flagella, the flagellum is not irreducibly complex. There was a simpler precursor system that, uh, from which that larger system eventually evolved. There are several different ideas about the evolutionary relationships that obtain between the uh, flagellum as a whole system and the type 3 secretory system. One is that the type 3 secretory system is the aboriginal form, the ancestral form, from which the flagellum as a whole evolved. Another closely related idea is that the flagellum and the type 3 secretory system co-evolved from some simpler common ancestor. Both of these would represent challenges to the Michael Behe thesis that the uh, flagellum is irreducibly complex and did not arise through a series of gradual evolutionary steps uh, in the standard Darwinian way. But there are two other possibilities. One is that the, uh, the, the flagellar motor is the aboriginal system, or the flagellum as a whole is the aboriginal system, from which the type 3 system is a degenerative byproduct. This would be the hypothesis of de degenerative evolution, where essentially the, what's envisioned is that the flagellar system would have been there with its, in its full glory, its full 30 parts, and its biosynthetic pathways and all of that but that some of the parts in some systems and some bacteria would have been lost such that the, the secretory system would then perform this limited function of, of being a secretory device and it would have lost parts and lost genetic, the expression of genetic information. Um, and another idea is that the two are completely independent. They had independent origins and uh, so those are the, the four possibilities. The latter two possibilities, the idea that of degenerative evolution or separate origins, either of those hypotheses are consistent with Behe's theory of intelligent design and his claim that the, that the flagellum as a system could not have arisen through a series of gradual evolutionary steps. So those are the four different hypotheses and the four possibilities for explaining the relationship between these two systems that we find in, in bacteria of, of many different varieties. Well, the really interesting thing about this debate between Behe and his uh, interlocutors who are advancing co-option is that it's a te that the two different approaches, the, the different hypotheses, generate different testable uh, predictions. And those predictions are helping us to adjudicate, to decide whether Behe is right or whether his critics are right. Now, for example, if the co-option idea is right and the flagellar system is derived, if it, if, if it has evolved from a simpler aboriginal system, in particular the type 3 secretory system, then when we find the type 3 secretory system in isolation, the genes that are responsible for building that system should be older than the genes that are responsible for building the flagellum as a whole. Now there are different ways of testing the relative ages of genes. And these different methods are surprisingly yielding a conclusion that confirms Behe's thesis rather than the co-option thesis. In particular, they're showing that the genes for building the type 3 secretory system when it occurs in isolation are younger than the genes for building the flagellar system as a whole, not older, which suggests, if anything, that the flagellar system was the aboriginal system and the type 3 secretory system is the derived system or the, the, uh, the, the devolutionary byproduct of that aboriginal system. One of the ways that we can measure the relative ages of genes or, or different sets of genes is by comparing the mutational density 
in those different sets of genes. There were, and so these mutation density experiments will measure uh, the, the degree of variation of homologous genes in different sets of genes. If there's a lot of variation, it's assumed that there were a lot of mutations, which would imply a lot more time had elapsed since the aboriginal genes were established. Uh, if the number of mutations is fewer, if the gene density is lower, then that would uh, imply less age, uh, less time has elapsed since those original genes were established. In the case of the flagellum and the type 3 secretory system, mutation density experiments have shown that the mutation density in the genes required for building the type 3 secretory system in isolation are much younger than the genes that are required for building the flagellum as a system as a whole. And therefore, we can conclude from that that the flagellum is a much older system and that the type 3 secretory system is de either derived from that or simply arose independently long after the fact. But in no case do, do those mutation density experiments suggest that the, the type 3 secretory system is the aboriginal system because the genes, again, for building that type 3 secretory system are younger than those of, of the genes that are required for, for building the flagellum as a whole. Well, there's another fascinating way that evolutionary biologists can uh, assign a relative age to these two very distinct systems, the type 3 secretory system and the flagellum as a whole. And that is by evaluating their uh, phylogenetic distribution among bact various bacterial species. It turns out that uh, the uh, type 3 secretory system is only found in a very small subset of gram-negative bacteria. And it's not found in the gram-positive bacteria, and it's not found in all gram-negative bacteria. And so that suggests that it's been around, it hasn't been around very long. It's only distributed very narrowly in the phylogenetic uh, tree, if you will, of bacteria. But conversely, the flagellum is found distributed much more widely across many different uh, groups or species of bacteria. And that suggests that it has an origin deeper in the uh, phylogenetic tree of, the, of bacterial species because it's, and that there's simply been a longer time for that distribution to occur across those different species. So that would again suggest that the flagellum and the genes that made it are older than the type 3 secretory system and the genes that made it. Well, there's another fascinating discovery that's enabled us to uh, assess the relative ages of the type 3 secretory system versus the flagellum as a whole. And that is that the genes for building the type 3 secretory system when it occurs in isolation are found on little mobile genetic units called plasmids. And we know that plasmids and other kind of mobile genetic units are transferred from bacterium to bacterium, that they move around. But these, the genes for building the type 3 secretory system are not found in the core circular uh, bacterial chromosome. And so we know that the, this suggests that the aboriginal system, the system, the genetics, the genes that for building the system as a whole were in place first, and then these mobile units uh, likely were added later and provided this capacity for building the type 3 secretory system in isolation from the function of, of the flagellum as a whole. Uh, so that's another indicator that, of, of relative age, and it suggests again that the flagellum is the aboriginal system and the type 3 secretory system is uh, something that either came later or is derived from that, that aboriginal system. Well, there's one more indicator of relative age that's kind of an interesting one. Uh, it turns out that these type 3 secretory systems are used by bacteria to inject toxins in eukaryotic organisms so that they can ingest those, uh, the, the contents of the eukaryotic organism. And the, the, what's interesting about that is that eukaryotes come on the scene billions of years after the first bacteria are already on the planet. So if you think about the functional requirements of a bacterial cell, they will need a flagellar motor 
much sooner in their evolutionary history than they will need a secretory device to uh, allow them to uh, act as a predator vis-a-vis -a, -vis a, a eukaryotic cell or organism. And, and so that suggests that the, uh, the, the, the flagellar motor was on the scene first. It confers a basic functional requirement of all bacteria irrespective of whether or not eukaryotes are on the scene. It allow, it's the, the function is motility. It allows the, the, the bacterial cell to move around and, and, and find its food. Uh, but this uh, specialized innovation for uh, uh, secreting toxins into eukaryotes is only going to be useful once eukaryotes are on the scene. And they come, again, on the scene long after bacteria uh, have, have, have first emerged, or bacteria have first emerged, therefore suggesting that the Flagellum is, again, uh, the first thing on the scene, and the type 3 secretory system comes long after. It's not its ancestor, and therefore the flagellum could not have evolved through an evolutionary process of co-option as envisioned by some of Behe's critics. Various results that suggest that the genes that are necessary to build the flagellum are older than the genes that are involved in building the type 3 secretory system not only count against the hypothesis that the type 3 secretory system is the aboriginal system from which the, the flagellum evolved, but they also count against the hypothesis that the two evolved in tandem at roughly the same rate, such that they are uh, uh, commonly derived byproducts of some common ancestor. Because on that thesis, you would expect the genes in each of the two systems to be roughly the same age, and yet through several different indicators, we find that there's a clear temporal asymmetry such that the flagellar motor and the genes necessary to build it are older, not younger, than the genes necessary to build the type 3 secretory system. So these indicators of, of relative age uh, in each case uh, disconfirm not just one, but both of the evolutionary ideas about how the flagellum as a whole would have arisen from something simpler.